Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of The Good Life. My last guest, Zach Jackson, was over a year ago, and we're back in action now. So today, I have Lynn Sieber. She has raised five children. She is a brilliant thinker. She is an articulate speaker. She's a teacher. And uh, she is my guest today. She also happens to be <laughs> my mother. So... One of the things that fascinates me is family dynamics. Uh, it's something upon being recently married that my wife and I talk a lot about uh, her family dynamics, my family dynamics, and just in general. So, uh, Lynn, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matthew. Um, so, kicking off, something that I have reflected about uh, you and parenting styles is how uh, different each of your kids are. Uh, like, I'll, talk, I'll tell this to people, I'm like, you know, when I like reflect on how I want to parent, um, and like seeing different friends had to have different parenting styles. I'll tell them, I'll say like, yeah, I think, uh, like how you modeled parenting of seeing each of our kid, each of your kids be vastly different from the military to teaching to Bethel school of supernatural ministry. And so I'd be curious just off the cuff, what's your, uh, what's your philosophy of parenting? What do you feel like? What do you feel like, uh, the core traits of being like? A successful parent is ideally you are able to discern the giftings of your child and their strengths weaknesses and hopefully encourage them in their strengths encourage them to pursue their strengths uh, provide opportunities for them to develop their strengths and talents and yeah every kid is different so I think I tried to see that early yeah. and you know, you look back and you think, oh, I missed it here or this would have been better for this child. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think you look for their strengths and what yeah. their passions or interests and try to either steer them in that way or encourage them. Yeah. And I think uh, for the, for the audience. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think you and dad did a really good job of, always championing how different we all were and because sometimes you see parents that are very prescriptive they have like a vision of like what their kids want whether that's like a big family like the kennedy family that's like oh we're going to be a political dynasty you're going to be in, like very much like on the nature versus nurture like nurturing like this is what you're going to be um yeah and i think a good mark of parenting is um is like seeing the the spark or, or the gift um what, what would you say is the most challenging part of being a parent <clears throat> oh, many challenges. Um, You're getting it here live, folks, live. <laughs> <laughs> most challenging. Mm. Yeah, most challenging. I think to hang in there with your child, to believe in your child. They may go through rough patches. They may go through periods when they don't believe in themselves or other people don't believe in them, but to keep on believing in them and loving them encouraging them uh yeah believing the best for them always being there that can be a challenge right if they may not think you're very cool at certain yeah. times in yeah. your life and they may not want your love and encouragement yeah friendship but to just stay the course yeah i like that yeah it's true i mean no i mean i think about <clears throat> it you know in different in my I mean, I think about all of us siblings on our different arcs of doing really well, struggling myself. Um, yeah, times where like dark, dark times where for sure to have your and your and dad's support and belief of like, hey, this may seem like, you know, hey, Matthew, this may seem like your world is imploding, but like this too shall pass. Like you're going to make it through. Yeah, I know having having parents just kind of normalizing, you know the struggles of, of coming of age and all that is, is helpful. What would be your, uh, what would be your best advice to a couple about ready to start a family? What would you say? Like, Hey, top two or three words of wisdom. Uh, prioritize the friendships with your children. Yeah. With your children, with each other. Um, I remember raising your kids and friends would be having birthday parties and their siblings wouldn't be invited. I'd be like, what do you mean they're not invited? So I never made you play with each other, yeah. but I would encourage it. Hey, yeah. Michael, why don't you go shoot some hoops with Mark? Hey, Matthew, mm -hmm. could you read Catherine a bedtime story? Mm -hmm. 
a Amy, and you guys are all really good friends. Yeah. You travel with each other, you call each other, you yeah. connect. And people have asked me about that over the years. Your kids are so close. You mm -hmm. know why? And I think that's, I think as a parent, you can encourage that. Yeah. Or, you know, you can allow them to be in separate bedrooms and close their door and yeah. totally shut out the rest of the family. And we mm -hmm. just didn't, you know, that wasn't the way we were going to do yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you and dad played the long game. Like, um, but even on that note, yeah, I think the encouraging something but not like mandating it because right. then it uh, creates like, you know, a resentment. So, you know, I think Amy and I weren't friends really. Well, we weren't not friends. It, it, we weren't enemies. It just like there really wasn't any commonality. And probably like for her, like her with us, us, both Mark and Mark and I, and I. But I mean, then, hey, a decade or two later, you know, we travel to Scotland and like, we kind of found our friendship and now as adults we've kind of all found our our niche so yeah sometimes that long game of like okay there you know you you, you sometimes it takes till adulthood to like build that <clears throat> that friendship or or solidify it but um yeah i think us boys even though we <clears throat> went at it you know as kids like we did we always enjoyed dress ups and play lincoln logs and Playmobil, yeah legos yeah and even on the note of like prioritizing friendship like i think about like parents with kids um i feel like what, what do you so what do you feel like the difference is between parents that are friends with their kids but then also parents that are like tr just try to be friends first because you see it with parents that are like not not doing the job of parenting and they want to be like their buddy and it's like and then their teenager or son or daughter whoever is treating them like like they would like a friend or like a, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So what do you feel like the difference is between like parenting towards friendship, but also versus like parenting as like primarily wanting to be the buddy? Yeah, I think, I don't know where the transition comes. I, I do believe there is a transition because right mm. now I think something very valuable and that's something that dad and I both treasure is um, being friends with you kids yeah. and having, being friends, you know, going to music events together and exploring different venues or, you know, doing activities together, traveling together. So I will always be your mom. Yeah. And hopefully always be a, you know, advisor and counselor. But but that transition happens. Mm -hmm. I don't think I think when you try to be the friend is when you don't want to make waves and you're going yeah. to make waves when kids are little. They yeah. want their own way and they mm -hmm. can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> They can't eat candy bars yeah. all day long and yeah. they can't watch five hours of television mm -hmm. and they can't hit their friend and they can't smart mm -hmm. off. So, you know, your wills are going to, yeah. and that doesn't, so you're not their friend. You know, yeah. You're, you're mm -hmm. kind and you're loving, mm -hmm. but you're their parent. Mm -hmm. And I think as children become adults, that uh, friendship, you know, you're no longer an authority figure. You're yeah, you're more of peers. Yeah. I think that a healthy that's a healthy relationship. Some people I don't think that transition ever happens. Yeah. Parents always feel they're the authority and you know, even when children are in mm -hmm. their twenties and thirties are always Yeah. You know, imposing their mm -hmm. standards and will. So yeah, it's tricky, but I don't think you you know, I don't think that's a goal to be the yeah. kids buddy buddy and friend. Yeah. Be kind, be loving, yeah. be there. Yeah be present but you have to set the guidelines of yeah. what's healthy and and what you feel is the you know best yeah do you see i see a lot of correlations like um so both my mom and i were teachers um but we're not both parents um so i mean i see a lot of correlation to like that and teaching do you, like that same idea of like being the kid's friend and buddy oh. versus what would you see a correlation i guess it's a leading question but do you have you experienced any any correlation right. there? I mean, there are teachers that are always the more popular, uh, like the cool teacher, the cool teacher, the buddy. <laughs> yeah, but they're the ones that let you know things slide. Oh, they don't mm -hmm. care if the kids have their cell phone out. Yeah, they don't care if they're looking at it during class. Yeah, they don't care if the f bomb drops every yeah. word. You know, they're just like, oh, everything's cool. Versus, right. I think it's fine to maintain the standards that you think mm -hmm. are, are right in the mm -hmm. classroom and the language that you think is right and best for learning and the you know, I mean, if you don't want cell phones, they go in the basket. Right. You know, so, but I think you could still have a great relationship 
I was a more strict teacher, but I had a great relationship with my middle schoolers. Yeah. You know, they came in, they talked to me. Yeah. They knew I was in their corner. I yeah. was always there to help them, you know, help mm -hmm. them learn. So Yeah. Yeah. But yes, there is a correlation for sure. Yeah, totally. I think um Yeah, I, I think like I see parents I see parents sometimes that are like and I think it's the authority piece, like they're parents that are it's it's more about them. It's like they don't they're not okay with their kids being upset with them or right. or they're not okay or they need to feel like their kids like them so because mm -hmm. they're insecure they need to get they need to get um self-worth and like be boosted up by how much their kids like them and so it's like yeah you're i watch them sometimes like yeah, your inability to like have your kid dislike you is actually ruining your kid because you're not setting boundaries you're not using your god-given authority to create a structure and a framework around them to protect them and to, you know, if they disrespect you, if they're home late. So yeah, I felt like you guys set that up early. And so I felt like, I mean, I feel like we were, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll tell people, I'm like, yeah, I didn't really have curfews or like, sometimes we were out till 2 a.m., but it'd be like, you know, I was at, we were all at Carter's house at the bonfire and you right. know his mom. And it was like, there really wasn't rules because there was like, also there was trust. I mean, there there was rules, but it was like I kind of came and went as I wanted. But also, we almost were, I think, more like friends in high school. There wasn't really any heavy handed need for discipline, you know. And again, that's child by child, totally. right? <laughs> like someone that would uh, cross that trust yeah. and come home at three in the morning, drunk, your car's wrecked. Yeah. It's like, okay, right. midnight, and you're going to have to take an Uber because... Yeah. You don't treat my car the yeah. way I treat. So again, it's yeah. it's child by child. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, we have got to get this one to the airport. She is about to go visit her grandkiddos. Yes. And my older brother. So uh well, Lynn, we want to thank you for being my second guest. Thank you, on Matthew. It's the good honor. life. <laughs> As you all can see, is a premium studio here in the office. But um, lovely. Yeah, so uh, more to follow. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, we'll have to do this again, Mom. Watch again. Woo!